Should the CERC report now become part of the evidence the inquest? Well, you know, that's a very interesting point. There was, there's a couple processes here that I think people have to understand. Uh, we have changed both nationally and internationally. We were one of the first jurisdictions to put in place critical incident reporting. And part of the trade-off of critical incident reporting is if you're not going to cover up and bury your mistakes, because you know that was the medical terminology in the past, you have to allow people to have the opportunity to, uh, to speak candidly and openly and be prepared to admit their mistakes. And part of that was a understanding that not all the information provided would be made public, would go to the critical incident. That was a trade-off, a trade-off between the, the, the days when I was health critic and no information was coming forward and no information was provided to today where we have critical incidents and in fact we post them. So the trade-off is yes, uh, we get to find out what's going on and we get to improve the situation, but you're also balancing off a couple of different principles. One is we don't want the ethos that used to be in the system that you bury your mistakes. We want people to feel that they can come forward and admit when they made a mistake and learn from that. So because of that, you have to provide some protection in terms of some of the information. But let's not forget, we are now having an open, independent inquest, which is a public inquiry into the situation, and all the testimony uh, will be available to the public. The public will be, uh, there's still any witnesses who are, who've provided information in the past can be provided, can provide information at the inquest, and all of that information can be dealt with in an overall, comprehensive, independent fashion.